Do you feel stuck in a plateau with your fat loss plan? After too many years of losing and regaining the same weight, I finally figured out five huge weight loss mistakes I was making that was keeping me fat. Keep watching to learn if you're making these same common weight loss mistakes, plus what you can do to finally get the results you have been working so hard for. Before we get into it, please like the video and subscribe. I want to show you how I finally got my scale to budge after 40 even when nothing else seemed to work. Hey, I'm Nissa, and my 100 pound weight loss story was featured in media like People Magazine and Pop Sugar. Since then, I've helped hundreds of women break free from fad and yo-yo diets with the same macro approach I use to lose 100 pounds. Okay, let's talk about five big weight loss mistakes that kept me fat. Mistake number one. I always sought out plans for quick weight loss instead of using a slow and steady approach that leads to a more sustainable plan. We all know the name of the fat loss game. If you want to see the scale drop quickly, all you need to do is slash your calories very low and then do tons of cardio in order to lose weight, right? This is a weight loss strategy I followed for full decades of my life, and all it's led to is some initial weight loss followed by immediate weight regain once diet burnout hits. Perhaps this strategy works for the first few weeks or maybe even for those who have strong willpower and a lot of weight to lose. This plan can even last for months, but eventually you will crash your metabolism with this approach. Trust me. I have been there and done that far too many times to count. If this is your current strategy, please understand there will be a time when your physiology catches up. Eventually, you won't have the abilities to sustain this approach to weight loss. Maybe this could be in the form of all out binge eating on the weekend where you vow to get right back on track on Monday. It could be in the form of feeling weak or shaky or just plain worn down because you're not eating enough to sustain your current level of activity, so your body begins to break down, or maybe you find yourself sick more often. Or you could end up in a big fat weight loss plateau where no matter how low you cut calories, you just can't seem to lose any weight. And this happens because your body compensates by lowering the amount of calories that you burn whenever you cut calories. This is especially noticeable when you cut calories way lower than you should from the start. Since we all have to eat something eventually, sooner or later you will have no choice but to eat more, only this time around your metabolism is slower, which means you could regain everything you lost and for most women it's going to happen much more quickly and by eating even less food than before. Mistake number two is I overdid intense cardio in order to speed up fat loss. Now, this is a lesson that I have to keep learning over and over. Cardio, especially in the form of health club machines like ellipticals, treadmills, and stairmasters, they've all been a big part of my weight loss routine for as long as I can remember. But even before I joined a health club, pretty much the day I turned 18, I ran around the neighborhood in an attempt to burn more fat. Now, needless to say, I've been at this cardio thing for a very long time. Since all of the weight loss gurus told me that not only did I have to slash calories to somewhere like 12 or 1300 per day to lose weight, but that I also had to add more fat burning cardio into my routine, I was an A plus student and I pedaled or ran or climbed stairs for up to 30 to 60 minutes most days. And while all of this cardio does boost fat loss at first, the weight loss gains that you experience are unfortunately only temporary as your body becomes way more efficient with calories burned during, during cardio over time. Now, this means the cardio gets easier as your body adapts to your new routine, which that's actually a good thing because who wants to feel like they're huffing and puffing and about to die anytime they step on the elliptical? But what I didn't realize at the time is your body adapts to cardio in more ways than one. The more often you perform cardio, especially if you're always picking the same machine, the less calories you burn during your session. This means your body adapts to the excess calories burned by becoming more efficient. And this sort of efficiency 
is not what you want, at least not if you're hoping to lose that jiggle around your middle. When you become more efficient with calories burned during cardio, this could mean if you burn 400 calories for an hour on the elliptical this week, if you're still following the same exact routine like four weeks from now, you may only burn 300 calories during the same kind of session. Even worse, if your cardio session also leads to excess hunger, so maybe you end up overeating after spending an hour on the elliptical, you can eat back everything you took an hour to burn in three minutes or less. And this is exactly why so many people will tell you that cardio is useless and that you really can't out-exercise a bad diet. Now, I'm not saying that cardio is useless because when done the right way, there are other health benefits that come along with a few cardio sessions each week. I just learned that after spending way too much time trying to pedal off the fat, that cardio isn't really the best tool when it comes to fat loss. Mistake number three, I didn't move much throughout the day once my workout session was done. Now that I just got telling you to quit all of the intense cardio, now I'm going to tell you that you still need to move more throughout the day. And I'm only telling you this because this is a big mistake I made that kept me fat. I used to think hitting the gym most days and spending time on the cardio machines made me an active person. The truth is, I was only active for up to 60 minutes per day, and then I was pretty much sedentary for the other 23 hours. And while those 60 minutes of activity is really a good bonus, once I learned how metabolism works, I learned that most people actually burn more calories through neat activity than you do with eat activity. Now, a quick explanation of these different daily activities is that neat activity consists of basic daily movements like walking to your car, maybe moving your arms when you talk, or even typing and fidgeting. Now, eat activity, on the other hand, consists of purposeful daily exercise. So when you do things like resistance training um, or even just a walk around your neighborhood. And since most people only exercise somewhere around 60 minutes per day, a few days each week, it makes sense that you actually burn more with neat activity since this makes up the other 23 hours of the day. In fact, according to Dr. Huberman, People who fidget or unconsciously add more movement to their day can burn hundreds to thousands more calories in need activity than people who don't naturally fidget. While it's out of your control when it comes to some daily movements like how often you blink, when you track how much movement you get each day through something like daily step counts, this can help boost calorie output, which can start to add up in your fat loss equation. Now, the way that I add more movement into my day is by adding more walking. Not only do a few quick daily walks add up to more steps, aka more movement, but walks also help lower cortisol. They can help you recover from more strenuous, resistant workouts, and moderate walks can even help you reduce your appetite so that you stick to your daily calorie budget. Mistake number four is I didn't prioritize building muscle. Now, unfortunately, most women are taught to burn fat by hitting the cardio machines. It wasn't until I made it to my early 40s that I finally discovered just how backwards this thinking was. We already talked about when you manually burn calories with cardio, the effects of your efforts diminish over time, which actually slows down your metabolism long term. The good news is there is an exercise regimen you can add to your routine that actually helps speed up your metabolism. Now, in case you haven't guessed what that is, it's building muscle with a strength training routine. Building muscle helps speed up your metabolism since muscle burns more calories at rest than fat. While perhaps adding a single pound of muscle won't make much of a difference, when you continually strive to add more muscle over time, burning fat just gets easier. And this is true even when you're just hanging out doing nothing. The bad news, if you don't prioritize building muscle or at the very least maintaining the muscle that you already have, then you should expect to regain everything you lose on your diet. That's because when you lose precious muscle mass, your metabolism actually slows down. Now, this means it takes less calories to maintain your weight, and this 
could mean that any little diet slip up can pack on the pounds. Also, working to build muscle is even more important as you age since after age 30, you begin to lose as much as three to 5% of your total muscle mass per decade. So if you're a 40 year old woman watching this, then you could already be experiencing sarcopenia, which is age related muscle loss for an entire decade if strength training isn't part of your routine. Now, if you don't want to become a weaker version of yourself year after year, decade after decade, it's not too late to learn how to lift. While I didn't take weight training seriously until my 40s, I see women at my gym working with personal trainers in their 50s, 60s, and beyond. One more thing. If your main priority is to lose excess fat, then that's the best reason to add strength training now. I promise you the fat loss process is just so much easier when you prioritize adding muscle to your body. This helps your body burn more fat on its own, no extra work required. Mistake number five is I try to wing fat loss. Listen, I have been in this dieting game for so many years. I started with my first diet somewhere around age 12 and I've held pretty steady with always being on some kind of diet ever since. In the 30 years that I've struggled with my weight, the one thing that I learned is that winging weight loss just doesn't work. As much as tracking calories and macros seems like a huge pain in the butt, I've learned that having this data right in front of my face is the only way to make the weight loss process both reliable and consistent. This is especially true since consistent weight loss really does come down to a math equation. Now, I'm not saying that losing weight is as easy as you eat X amount of calories and then you burn X amount of calories in order to reach your goal because there are more variables at play. But when you keep track of what you're eating, which includes both macros and calories, and then you also track daily movement to make sure that it's not dropping in response to your calorie deficit, then that's all of the great information that you can use to set up a plan for consistent results. Now, as an example, let's say you decide to eat 2,000 calories per day for fat loss while aiming to walk around 10,000 steps each day. But maybe your weight seems to be at a standstill for something like three to four weeks. Well, now you know that that is actually a maintenance plan for you. But if you didn't track this data, you may never realize why you're not dropping fat. And this is when diet desperation sneaks in and then you jump to the next quick fix fad diet that will only lead to weight regain in the end. But since you had a reliable plan, now you can test dropping calories another 10 or 20% to see if that gets things moving. Alternatively, if your calories are already lower than you'd like, perhaps adding more movement is the thing that you need for success. But if you don't track these variables, then you're always just guessing at what might work and most of the time guessing won't lead to long-term success. This approach actually is only going to lead to you seeking out another quick fix plan that might work for a few weeks before you end up in the same frustrating place. Now, I work with women all of the time who never found the weight loss success they wanted until I helped them figure out the right macros for them and then they took the time to track. And if they can do it, and if I can do it, this means that anyone can do it, and that includes you, as long as you're willing to put in the effort. Of course, if you need help with getting started with the right plan, then I've got you covered. I'll add the link for personal coaching to the description so we can set up a time to talk. I'm also going to add my five best fat loss tips for women over 40 so you can get started with everything that's helping me achieve my best health after 40.